CBS Television presents a special report on Sputnik 1, the Soviet space satellite. Douglas Edwards reporting. Until two days ago, that sound had never been heard on this earth. Suddenly, it has become as much a part of 20th century life as the whir of your vacuum cleaner. It's a report from man's farthest frontier, the radio signal transmitted by the Soviet Sputnik, the first man-made satellite. Lifted at 22 hours, 28 minutes, Moscow time, and entered orbit around the Earth. The first artificial Earth satellite in the world has now been created. This first satellite... It emanates radio signals every three-tenths of a second, charting its course as it streaks across the sky. Radio signals can be picked up on 20 and 40 megacycles as it circles the Earth once every... We announce to our that anyone with a shortwave radio can listen to Sputnik. This is Harry Fang on a recording. This is the satellite, October 1957. Coming in on uh, 20 megacycles. Steve Chef left town Long Island reporting to the world that I am hearing it. He needs Alter. Dying now. Out of my range. Right now it's north of Auckland, New Zealand and moving southeast. It will be in 10 minutes about 1,500 miles north of Little America and in about 24 minutes it will be uh, over Santiago, Chile and in about 50 minutes from now, it will be over Spain. Ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing to you the most important story of this century. Mankind's breakthrough into space. For the first time, mankind has reached for the stars and found them within his grasp. Hello everyone, welcome to the video and thank you for joining us today. We are at the Napa Sonoma Marshes Wildlife Area and here on this land, is what remains of the Press Wireless Base building that operated from 1946 to 1966. This was the first station in the far west to pick up the radio signals of the Russian Sputnik satellite. So why did they build this out in the middle of nowhere? Well the answer is because it's surrounded by extremely flat marshland and there was nothing around it for miles to ruin its radio signal. This base made its first contact around 6 o'clock on Friday, October 4th, 1957. The signal was being picked up at intervals of every hour and 35 minutes after first contact. But remember, this was a very scary time in America and throughout most of the world because of the Cold War. It was still going on. The people did not know what the satellite was capable of or of what its intentions were. Ever since the news of Sputnik flashed around the world, America has been asking and questions. People alarmed that a foreign country, especially an enemy country, can do this. If we fear this. We fear that they have something out that majority of the people don't know about. Senator Jackson of Washington describes the Russian achievement as a devastating blow to the prestige of the United States. The people of the United States have been humiliated. They're disturbed and they're unhappy. The launch of the Sputnik 1 by the Soviet Union is widely considered the event that initiated the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. The successful launch of the first artificial satellite into orbit shocked the United States and triggered a period of intense competition and anxiety, leading to significant achievements in space technology and a national focus on scientific and technological superiority. The Westinghouse Broadcasting Company filmed the first motion pictures of the Russian satellite. You are about to witness this historic event. Now here is a photograph released by the Soviets of the satellite, and this is a track of what you will see in the lower half of your television screen. So be sure that you watch very, very carefully. Now, there it is, I see it. about in the center of the screen, in the lower third, you got we, the side we moved the camera. the camera. The camera was moved there. Now we start over again. Now we start over again, and the stars are in the background. This is a photograph of a monitor screen. There is the object. Across the bottom. Across the bottom. That's about about uh, that's in the middle of the screen now, I would say. That is wonderful, isn't it? To say the least, George, they're out of this world, but... <laughs> Uh, this is uh, really quite an advancement for not only the Russians, but for international science. I think we'd all agree on that. It's the first time anybody has ever been able to get anything out that far in space and keep it there for any length of time. And this is probably the first step toward space travel or moon travel, something we'll probably run into maybe in Eddie's lifetime here at least. <laughs> 
Eddie, would you like to take a trip to the moon? No, sir. I like it fine right here. <laughs> up of the United States edition of Sputnik was made at a press conference with leaders of the scientific teams, Dr. Werner von Braun, Dr. James Van Allen, and Dr. William Pickering, a three-way collaboration between private industry, academic science, and the military. Jupiter C stands poised on its launching pad. The hour's long countdown approaches zero, a moment of enormous tension, for every missile launching is still an experiment. Any one of tens of thousands of things can go wrong with catastrophic results. But all that can be done to assure perfection has been done. The moment is at hand. The countdown reaches zero. Some three minutes later, Explorer is in orbit, broadcasting to the world its coded scientific data. Cosmic ray intensity, meteor impact, solar radiation, these are the dry facts that will help carry a man ever farther into the age of space. Thank you.